Hello and welcome everyone. Today we shall be discussing and learning about a very interesting phenomenon known as the wobbling phenomenon. Now the wobbling phenomenon will be discussed by explaining the wobble base pairing and the wobbling hypothesis. This is a part of the genetic code and wobbling hypothesis is covered under the genetic code. So we all know that the Watson and Crick base pairing rules are that adenine pairs with thymine with the help of two hydrogen bonds in DNA whereas cytosine pairs with guanine with the help of three hydrogen bonds in DNA. In case of RNA, the Watson and Crick base pairing is uh, replaced by thymine that is the thymine in RNA is replaced by uracil so adenine binds to or pairs with uracil with the help of two hydrogen bonds in RNA. On, <clears throat> so a wobble base pair on the other hand is a pairing between two nucleotides in RNA molecules that does not follow the Watson and Crick base pairing rules. Wobble here means to sway or to move unsteadily. Now because of this untraditional base pairing, there may be different combinations of base pair that we will see in the next slide. Now the wobble base pairing rules are guanine binds to uracil, inosine binds to uracil, Inosine can also bind to adenine and inosine can also bind to cytosine. So these are the four common wobble base pairs that are seen. Now what is inosine? Inosine is nothing but the nucleotide form of hypoxanthine. So as we have seen earlier that wobble means to sway or to move unsteadily. So this means that the as you can see that guanine is not binding to its traditional base that is cytosine but it is also binding to uracil and at the same time inosine which does not occur in DNA at all it is an unusual base and so it it is seen to be binding with uracil adenine as well as cytosine so there is lot of flexibility in this pairing compared to the Watson and Crick base pair rule. Now the wobble base pairs are generally seen in the RNA secondary structure and between mRNA and tRNA during translation of genetic code. So this brings us to the next question that is what is wobble hypothesis. Now wobble hypothesis is an important feature of the genetic code which means that there is the phenomenon known as the wobbling phenomenon seen in the genetic code. So let us try and understand that. Here you can see this is a tRNA molecule and the tRNA molecule, this is the anticodon end. Here the first base at the base at the first position towards the five prime end is exhibiting wobbling phenomenon. The remaining two are showing the traditional bonding, base pair bonding and they follow the Watson and Crick rule. So there is lot of flexibility at the first base pair of the tRNA or the third base pair, the third base at the mRNA. So it is the on the mRNA it is the third base that shows the that is show exhibits the wobbling and this is known as the wobble position. So here the stringency of Watson and Crick base pairing is not followed. Now let us see it a little more in detail. You can see that this is an mRNA codon ACI. And now in this codon can be recognized by three different tRNAs. It can be recognized with the anticodon on tRNA UGA. It can also be recognized with the tRNA having 
UGC at the anticodon and it can also be recognized by the tRNA having UGU bases at the anticodon end. So this means that one mRNA codon is recognized by three different tRNAs. So the wobble hypothesis by Watson, by uh, I'm sorry, by Francis Crick states that the third base in an mRNA codon can undergo non-Watson Crick base pairing with the first base of a tRNA anticodon. So according to this hypothesis, only the first two bases of the codon have a precise pairing with the bases of anticodon tRNA, while the pairing between the third base of codon and the first base of anticodon may wobble. Wobble means, which I mentioned earlier, to sway or move unsteadily. And because of this wobbling phenomenon, there is flexibility at the third position of the codon. So the wobbling phenomenon gives rise to degeneracy of genetic code which will be the topic of our next lecture. Thank you. I hope you found the wobbling hypothesis to be very interesting.